When starting a farm from the ground up, you can imagine that there are a lot of things to build and all of those things require a lot of lumber. So for us, next on our list is to build a yurt, a barn, our chicken coops, our mobile hen houses, duck house, goat shelters, pig shelters, farrowing hut, shade shelters, a greenhouse or two, and oh, did I mention two residential homes? The list goes on and on. So instead of spending a fortune on lumber at Home Depot, we decided to invest in a sawmill. This is huge for our farm as it means the possibilities are endless for all of the things that we'll be able to build. Using our 30 acres of untouched forest land, we will save a ton of money on all the lumber we'll need to build all the things on our list, as well as transform our woods into a silvo pasture, which will be an ideal environment for all of our goats and our pigs. So come along as we show you the process and stick around to the end so you can see us mill our own lumber for the very first time. Here we are at the Sunny Willow Farm sawmill site. This area has taken quite a bit of effort to get in order, but we wanted to make sure that we had an organized area uh, that was clean and clear of any sort of brush or trees or roots or anything. That way we're not fighting against the area while we're trying to mill some lumber. This area is positioned right across the street from the workshop, giving us easy access in and out. And it was already a little bit of a natural clearing, which usually is, is a good head start in trying to get this area clear. We only had to fell a few trees, which can be the biggest challenge in clearing an area, because not only do you have to cut them down, but you also have to figure out how to get them out from under the ground. And the, and the, the stump removal process can be a bit of a challenge if you don't have the right tools. First, we had to clear this area out. There's a huge network and web of roots that just can cause all sorts of tripping issues and, and stumbling issues. And you don't want to stumble next to a sawmill or next to a running blade. So we really had to make sure that we cleared that out with the, the skid steer and then as well as just pulling them out and stacking them high. The next part of our process was to pour a concrete slab. And the reason we poured a concrete slab is because you want as level of an area as possible when cutting wood. You want your cuts to be as straight as possible. We knew there are, there are generally ways to do sawmills where you can block the corners and, and just set it on some concrete blocks. But we knew that pouring a slab like this would last a lot longer and also give us the most consistent cuts over time. And that's really important to us. It is gonna cost a little bit more, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run. The next part of the process was to build an awning for the sawmill. And we knew it was important to us to make sure that we protect it and extend the life, the longevity of our sawmill. And the, the thing that was gonna deteriorate it the most was any sort of water staying on the machine. So the tricky part about this awning is we wanted to make sure that we had one side completely open. That way, loading and unloading logs onto the sawmill would be as easy as possible and you're not fighting with posts. If you have posts in the way, as you run, a, run the sawmill across the wood, you're fighting with the posts. Steve designed an an awning that was going to have all the support on one side. It took a little bit of effort. It was definitely the trickiest part of this build, but we made it work with a little extra support on the back, pulling that front roof area that's really weighing it all down, making sure that that was lifted up and put in the right spot. One of the great features of the sawmill has got to be the rainbow roof on the awning. I think it adds a little character. The Lord has blessed us with some, with some awesome community out here in East Texas and a really generous neighbor donated this metal to us, gave it to, to us as he had a little extra from a previous project, I guess a few extra previous projects, and we think it turned out really great. The last step in the process was assembling our sawmill, and <clears throat> we did a lot of research into figuring out what we wanted in a sawmill, and we settled on something that was uh, kind of balanced on price and quality, and we wanted something that would last us a long time, but also wouldn't break the bank, and we really felt like this was the best one for that. The assembly was pretty easy. It was straightforward, as uh, simple as just following the instructions, and we're ready to go. After we assembled it, we're ready to cut some logs, but before we do that, I wanna make sure we talk about our silvo pasture and what we're doing in the forest and why we're thinning out the trees. It's something that I'm really passionate about and I've done a lot of research on, and I'm excited to share that with you guys. Silvo pasturing is an innovative agriculture technique that involves combining forest and grazing livestock. The process can be completed in the pastures by the strategic planting of trees or in a forest like this where you can thin the trees to create a, an environment that is beneficial to the animals but also gives you a source of timber. The combination between trees, grasses, and livestock creates a sustainable and diverse ecosystem that benefits both the animals and the environment. 
The term silvo pasturing comes from the Latin word for forest, silva, forest, pasturing. We're really excited about developing a silvo pasture as there's just so many benefits that come with it. One of the biggest being soil health that comes from the natural fertilization of the forest by the animal's manure. Another benefit of silvo pasturing is that it can cut down on feed costs. The animals are gonna be eating the forage from the trees, the nuts and the fruits, and some say that it even improves the flavor of the meat. The trees also provide protection from the sun and the wind, helping create an environment that's gonna help our animals regulate their internal temperature. During the summer, the trees provide shade, and during the winter, they provide windbreaks. Texas summers can be brutal, and the stress that they bring can affect the growth, the reproductive health, the milk yields, and just overall longevity of your animals. Silvo pasturing can help alleviate this stress by creating a comfortable environment for the animals. To implement a silvo pasture in our woods, two things need to happen. First, we need to clear out the dense underbrush. To do this, we'll rotate our pigs and our goats throughout, letting them impact the land naturally, pigs rooting, goats eating up anything, and then letting it rest in between to allow for regrowth. After the animals have impacted the land, we'll go in and plant grasses behind them. And to make sure that these grasses get the sunlight they need, we'll go in and thin the trees to about 40% sunlight penetration, meaning there's about 40% open canopy where the sun can get in and help those grasses grow. Overall, silvo pasturing is a win-win for farmers and the environment. It offers many benefits that help improve the diversity, the sustainability, and the profitability of our farm. And it also stewards our land in a way that's in sync with the way that God designed it. So it's time to start the process and mill some lumber. It's a sawmill, that's Saw right. And the sawmill. <laughs> Good job, Lucy. There we go, nice. Well, well that side, but this side, just, yeah. Try we to gotta do it together. As we do it, Steve, back off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I am. Oh, okay. Go ahead, push that side. No. Okay, good, good. We're almost back to normal. 